Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. I hope you have a good time. Feel free to enjoy your Tasca. journey, how I started from way back with Lillian doing my first songs. I can't say that it was a plan. We didn't sit down and plan out something. Uh, first of all, it was something that we're doing for passion because we liked what we did. And we did not really anticipate where it would take us. Um, I mean, we used to sing together with Lillian in, in church and fellowship in high school. Um, she was in a band. We had a jazz band. I used to play a bit of guitar. She used to do vocals. So when I had the opportunity to meet um, A.D., who was one of the, I think, biggest producers at the time, and I asked if I could <laughs> try and do something, and so he told me, yeah, it's possible, but, you know, just first finish school, and then you can come. And But that was, like, the first time I had an opportunity to interact with like someone at a professional level. 
So I had a bit of, I wasn't that confident, <laughs> if I should say. So I called Lilian and back. I said, yo, you know, I had this opportunity, but I think we should do it together. It's my first time in studio, so come so we can, you know, give each other <laughs> morale and confidence, you know. Now, Lillian, how she got not to be in the picture was that at that point now, that was from six vacation, we had a bit of freedom. And, of course, as a girl, Lillian didn't have as much freedom as I had to be able to go out at night in the club and promote songs and, you know, meet DJs, meet stuff like that. So after, I remember that one time, she came with her mom and her dad and about at one in the night. So... It was a really a good, interesting experience. But thereafter, it was hard. First of all, the fact that, you know, I just, like I said, it wasn't a plan. I just called her to come and, you know, join me and we do this thing. And now, of course, she was seeing and also her parents were seeing like this is kind of a wild side of, of things. True, I had people used to ask me questions that was talk. Oh, you and that girl, we had your thing, and then her parents did what? Oh, they didn't want that. Well, I think people speculated because they didn't have an answer. Over time, I've realized that when people don't have an answer, they speculate. Speculation comes, becomes rumor, rumor becomes, you know, so there was no answer, and people didn't understand where she went, why she, and maybe I didn't, there was no explanation given. But, uh, I mean, Lillian and I had been friends since, like, I don't know, S1, S2. So we're like, I knew her parents, I knew her brothers. We, we were like almost, we were basically family. So that wasn't, I didn't have the chance to clear that up. <laughs> but there wasn't any involvement of any sort. And it had nothing to do with why she didn't proceed. It was just circumstances at the time for her, you know. Yeah. So after Asuna, Dela Nange, I took it a step higher. Me want, wanna, wanna, wanna walk with you. Got me want, talk and talk and talk and talk with you. I don't know why me eyes keep up with the air. Check out a cubera con away. Check out a cutamula con away. Jena, we chaga la sina na Cause I want your romance, yeah, yeah Your romance 
want your romance. I want your romance, yeah. I want your romance, yeah, yeah. Your romance, yeah. I want your romance, yeah. I want your romance, yeah. My journey has been really interesting. Um, I've had a lot of releases, I've had a lot of number one songs, I've had awards, I've been on charts, and I guess I need a new challenge now, and as far as growth is concerned. And when I started out, I was R&B pop. I was more inclined to what the kids are doing today. I remember in studio, AD used to have to revisit my songs and make them more, less, of what the sound is like today. So I have songs that I didn't even release then because they felt too, um, at the time they would say they're too out there. And even when you listen to songs like um, That Girl, when I first released the song That Girl, everyone told me, ah man, um, I don't know how you're gonna push a song. Uh, the style is so, you know, it's so urban, it's so, at the time, so I had a bit of, you know, kickback, feedback from even the media. It was hard to really push them, that kind of music because everyone would say, you know what, you need to do this kind. But I still managed, you know, to pull through. So I don't think it would be hard for me to adjust. I, 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 feel, like, I feel like this is a blessing, you know, a blessing in this case that the sound is, is becoming what it is because now this is what we've always, you know, this is what we've always wanted to have a sort of, where things are not so segmented, saying that, you know, if you're a Ugandan artist, you must do this kind of sound for UG and then, but you see the same fans, they consume all this other sound, so why would they accept it from you simply because you're from home, you know? And I, I think maybe also the different people I've worked with have come with different strategies and different approaches to how they do things. And so that has always, um, I guess, reflected in, in my career and the way things are done, there's always differences and periods. Um, so I have not done an album per se, though I have I what I could call a compilation on my um, my online stores, be it, um, iTunes and Spotify and all that, where you can get like all the songs right from Bear and Nange all through the singles, but I haven't had an album I've released as an album. And that's because over time, I felt like the consumption habits of our core market here in UG, our core listeners, was not so inclined towards albums. And also, albums always came with a high, um, high cost of production, which was not always translated into when it came to sales, vis-a-vis -vis singles, whereby it made sense, and you could do it again and again, and it could keep making sense. I could also say, I could be wrong, but I feel like it, the whole lockdown thing has been also kind of a silver lining to change people's perspectives and mindset a bit about consumption of music, be it online. Um, so that has given, I think, a way for albums to be a possibility. Um, also, I think the, the growth and transition and transformation of the music industry in Africa and Africans as a whole um, we've become so interconnected and even our core fans here in Uganda, they consume a lot of music from other African acts and that opens their minds to what the possibilities are. Things like albums are now a possibility. So as of now, I'm working on an EP, which I might actually translate into an album and I'm doing a bit more collabs because in the past couple of in the past couple of years, I haven't done a lot of collabs. Most of the songs I've been doing are singles. Then the only collab I did was like with Fie, uh, Bruno K, just a few. 
Um, so I'm now doing, I'm going to have more collabs next year with some of the artists you guys know, but I won't say any. Yeah, but I think I'm really, I'm excited to see how it's going to pan out because I'm working with some artists where maybe it would not be obvious because, you know, when I talk of collabs, there's people that artists, that fans always say, you know, you should work with so-and-so, work with so-and-so. So I'm also working with some of those that you might not straight away think like, that should be the person I work with because I'm trying to, you know, experiment, you know, try something new, get a new challenge. Yeah, so that's what's up. Dolina we wanubuka, we ya kole bide ya kukola. Yo mai malaika, haba chalanga kwe haba malidida. Te mate la kusangika, cause he made you completely, completely for me. God made you perfectly, perfectly. Makutona kusante, iba kumalate. God made you on a Sunday, yeah, he made you right. Oh, I could turn like a Sunday, yeah, back on my life, yeah. God made you on a Sunday, yeah, he made you right. Uh. Uli kumacham kwa no manye, uli mulu kancha tuleje, chosabe chapa ngule. I've been called a ladies man and people are always curious oh, who is he dating who is he I've dated a couple of girls over the years but like as of now as of now I don't think it's a priority to me <laughs> at this point I don't think it's a priority um, as far as being a ladies man is concerned maybe it's the kind of music but also love is a universal language. I've had a bit of a naughty um, love life in the past. Yeah, so I do have kids. Um, I have two. But um, I tend not to put them out in the public eye because I am not with the mother at the moment. 
And I had some issues in the past with um, tabloids. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, I think, uh, when my son was like maybe a year or so, um, there was some saga, you know, people are always looking, tabloids are always looking for something new to spill. And so they started involving these people, you know, the baby mama and the kid and, you know, getting pictures, putting them like a red paper. And she's a private person and has even a sensitive job that she was doing at the time. And that was the kind of thing that was really not going to work out for her. And so we had serious issues and actually um, it strained even the relationship because of that. Saying, I want to sue, I want to, I'm like, yo, that will just make things worse. And then so it was a whole, so it even affected that relationship. And, you know, it sort of fizzled and there was distance because of that kind of thing. Because she was like, okay, if, if, if you have an proximity with me and, and, and your son means that we're going to have to always be uh, facing some weird stories in, in the media and stuff, I can't do that. And of course, at the end of the day, you have to do what's right for the kid. So I couldn't be selfish in that, in that context. I actually just said, go lady law and be private. And now the kid is out there, he's happy, he's in the privacy that she wanted. And it's a win-win for everyone. So relationship with baby mama, um, it's not easy because like the background I gave you with the things that happened at first, um, being that my first... Um, my first baby mama was really private and her background was that she didn't want that kind of exposure. And even then I wasn't ready for any kind of responsibility in that sense at the time. So it was hard for me to reconcile because now, I mean, what do I do? That's what I do. So, I mean, I'm not going to like quit what I do, you know, for the sake but also she wasn't asking me to do that. She was just saying, I mean, we've got to do something. Of course, in hindsight, in her thinking, saying, oh, we should sue these guys and what. I was like, okay, uh, this is Uganda. You probably make things worse by trying to sue because then they'll write something else and say, so I opted for silence. And I think it worked. It worked out because, you know, it fizzled out and, you know, they had no more stories and uh, they just started writing now other things. And I think that helped our relationship to be cordial and healthy. And also the fact that, you know, the mamas, they move on, they have now other guys in their lives and, you know, and I think that's also good because then that way you're sure that you don't have baby mama drama. There's nothing worse than having a baby mama who hasn't moved on. So you, you don't want that. So I encourage, you know what? Have a love life and, you know, move on and go. It's better that way. <laughs> da 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 da, yeah. Da 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 da, yeah. Let me sing it like that. You were my only You were my only What the maku gamba can to a galala Baby yoda mutu sen no gwenja gala Kamparo we do gwen barara Baby yoda mutu sen no gwen kabala You only Never leave you lonely uh, Girl international Only in a style yo Better than the girls on the video Only my personal I'm falling for you I'm falling for you I'm falling for you uh, Come and me when you meet up I'm falling for 
for you I'm falling for you oh, oh. To me, world, I is the last year. Take me high like high grade. Told it as he has away. You are the one she will take a look. You only, yeah. Never leave you lonely. Ooh, she said, Boy, international. When I see you on a Monday, it's okay. It's alright. She say, Come, girl, put your body on me, body. It's a vibe when I see you on a Monday. It's okay, boy, boy. She say, It's okay. I love you, only. Yeah. Ooh, oh, never leave you lonely. All in a style of yo Better than the boys on the radio All in my personal I'm falling for you I'm falling for you I'm falling for you Yeah I'm falling for you I'm falling for you I'm falling for you Looking back, I think in 20, um, 2016, you know, I grew up with a disabled sister who had brain damage from birth. And it was a very complicated um, situation, a bit traumatizing for you to watch your little sister suffer through so much things surgeries and what, and still never get to be normal. I needed constant 24-hour care for everything. I had brain damage, I had, and I remember in 2016, that was the year she passed away. And I remember in the same year, like a couple of months, months apart, I also lost my paternal grandmom. And there was a lot of stuff going on. I had had issues with, um, I had a manager I had work, been working with who had done some gross financial misappropriation and really, you know, done a lot of damage. So there was a lot of stuff going on. I mean, I didn't talk to anyone about it. I was just dealing with it in my head. And I am not the type to go out on social media and start, I don't know, kuomulanga, saying, oh, this, you know, kind of stuff. So I, when I look back at it at the time I didn't realize it because when you're in the thing you don't really realize it but I think I was quite depressed at the time there was so much going on and this is not something that when you're in it you don't really think about it you know depression is something people talk about but I realize it can creep up on you and you won't even know it's happening you won't even know it's happening until you know so 
I sort of kept to myself. I mean, I never went to rehab or anything, but I pretty much kept to myself. Yes, all I could do was just, you know, go out with friends, drink, not to think about, you know, anything. And then, of course, at the time, I remember I also felt quite ill. I had a, I got a bronchial infection, and I was in, like, antibiotics for, like, months. And they really made me lose a lot of weight. And I asked the doctor, the doctor said, ah, it's fine, that's how the medicine is, you have to take it for so long so there was so much stuff going on and of course people were asking questions and I mean I, I didn't I wasn't comfortable enough to spill my I'm not comfortable with saying my issues you know to strangers you know I mean what are they going to do and, you know they say most of the time when you tell people your problems what are the what are the numbers I forget there's a certain passenger that will laugh a certain person that will celebrate, others laugh, others be like, we also have our own problems. Why are you telling us your, your stuff? So I'm not really always keen on to telling people my issues. And maybe because of that, it has always given a lot of room for speculation on what could it be, what could it be. But yeah, that was, it was quite a difficult time. But um, I thank God I managed to get through it, through you know, friends and family. And... Um, also, it was a good time to show me because, it's, you know, after quite a bit of time uh, in, this, in this industry, you reach a point and you don't know even who your real friends are. I thank God so much for that time because it was able to focus the lens on what's what and who's who of, you know, a situation and who actually matters and all that. So it was quite a difficult time. And of course, at that time, I also went quite a bit silent as far as music is concerned. I wasn't releasing anything. I wasn't hitting the studio. I didn't have any enthusiasm or vibe for that. With everything that's going on, yeah, that was really, I was in a very different uh, mindset. But um, I'm glad that you know, I was able to get over that and you know, move on with my life. First of all, I think I kept bad company. I kept bad company because I, I sort of secluded myself you know, from the friends I always used to have and sort of just went to do like other people who are not my usual company. And, you know, they say, tell me your friends, I tell you what you are. So inevitably, you know, it was a lot of drinking. It was a lot of, you know, constant uh, um, late nights out, a lot of irresponsible behavior. And I wasn't even, I mean, I remember I wasn't, I could you know, drink for days and not even eat anything, you know. I uh, remember at some point my mom used to come home and be like, yo, she would come and just cook and force me to eat, saying, you, you, you don't eat at all. Like, you drink and then you drink and then you drink and then you don't eat anything. And then you, when you lose weight and then you wonder what's going on. Until actually I think when I felt sick, it was a bit of a help because now the doctor said, yo, no drinking for you when you're on this meds. No this, no this. You have to. You have to eat. You have to. So... I think that was like, they say some things happen. <laughs> a blessing in this guy, something bad that happens but saves you from something worse. You know, so when I fell ill with my bronchial infection, uh, there were strong um, antibiotics they gave me. And he told me these antibiotics, they will make you lose weight if you don't eat. So no alcohol. So for like quite a while, I first went on like, like a three month Nothing at all, no alcohol, um, no smoking anything. And I remember by the time I was done with the course of the meds, I wasn't even, I kept on for it for like another three months. So I almost had like an eight month of, I don't know, of no use of anything of that nature. And I think that's why I was able to, you know, gain back my weight and gain back my focus. You're the only thing I miss, yeah, yeah. It's like you're playing my heart, I'm weaker You're my future I see no more you My miss, you're the only thing I miss, yeah My miss, you're the only thing I miss Why they call me who you yeah, no kusuwa, oh when I see you, yeah. Ninga ni mukomera, wana kamilu jo 
My name is Alan Tonics, so this is my task come all conversations. Thanks to my band. Uh, thanks to my audience. Thanks to the production team, which is doing an amazing, amazing job. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys had a good time because I was having a good time. Yep. It's a task come all conversation with Alan Tonics. Does she make me sick and a week and a week? Yeah, yeah. You're the only thing I need, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me the man. The people them. The people them. Yeah. Yeah. Just have swangs have any for putting this together. Yeah. Thank you. You're far too kind. Thank you.